Hey guys, it's Dr. Narita here. Quick question. Have you ever heard of someone actually getting something stuck on their penis? I know it sounds like the setup for a bad joke, but I promise you this is no laughing matter. Every year, men of all ages walk into emergency rooms, sometimes embarrassed, sometimes in real danger, because they slipped something on their penis for fun or experimenting, and then it wouldn't come off. And trust me, the pain, swelling, and potential damage can be devastating. That's why today we're diving into a topic that most men never think about until it's too late, penile strangulation. Stick with me because I'm going to bust some myths. Explain what really happens to your body in these situations, share the most common mistakes men make, and give you a clear action plan so you never end up in that nightmare scenario. And before we go further, let me know in the comments where you're watching from. I love hearing your stories and connecting with men all over the world. Oh, and hit that like button and subscribe if you want straight talking, no judgment health advice for men over 40. Now, let's clear up a huge misconception right away. A lot of guys think, come on, that doesn't really happen. That's just in weird medical stories, right? Wrong. This happens a lot more often than you'd think. We see it in emergency rooms. We see it in urology clinics. We even see it in kids when hair or threads get wrapped tightly around the penis. And no, this isn't just something that happens when people do something crazy. Sometimes men are simply experimenting, trying to improve erections, or even using objects they think will help during sex. The truth? Anything that tightens around the penis can become dangerous within minutes. It doesn't matter if it's a metal ring, a bottleneck, a piece of plumbing hardware, or even a rubber band. Once it goes on and swelling begins, the body's own biology works against you. That's the myth-busting truth. Penile strangulation isn't rare, it isn't just stupidity, and it can happen to anyone who tries to improvise with objects that don't belong there. So who am I to talk about this? I'm Dr. Narita, a board-certified urologist with over 12 years of experience treating men's health problems, from erectile dysfunction to prostate issues to cases just like this. I've spent years helping men protect their health and dignity. And I can tell you this. When it comes to penal strangulation, the earlier you understand the risks, the better chance you have of avoiding a truly life-altering mistake. I've personally seen men walk in swollen, panicked, sometimes after waiting far too long because of embarrassment, and I've seen how fast things can go from uncomfortable to urgent to catastrophic. So let's go step by step through the habits, mistakes, and traps that lead men into this situation so you can protect yourself, your confidence, and your manhood. Mistake number five, using everyday objects instead of medical devices. Let's start with one of the biggest mistakes. Thinking you can just MacGyver a device out of things lying around the house. Wedding rings, bottle caps, plumbing nuts, metal washers, even the neck of a plastic bottle. I've seen men use all of these. Biologically, here's the problem. Once that object is in place, blood flow into the penis continues, but blood flow out gets trapped. The penis swells beyond the size of the object. Suddenly, you're locked in. Emotionally, this is devastating. What started as an experiment for pleasure or curiosity quickly turns into embarrassment, fear, and panic. Practically speaking, everyday objects are not designed to release easily. Once they're on, you can't just wiggle them off. That's why medical-grade devices exist. So mistake number five is this, using random objects that have no give, no release, and no safety design. Mistake number four, believing it won't happen to me. This one is more psychological, but just as dangerous. Many men think, I'm careful. I'll only do it for a few minutes. I'll be fine. But the body doesn't care how careful you think you are. Within minutes, swelling begins. Within hours, circulation can be severely restricted. And if left long enough, tissue can literally start to die. Biologically, your penis is filled with delicate blood vessels and nerves. Strangulation cuts off oxygen, leading to cell death. Emotionally, it robs you of peace of mind. Instead of intimacy, you're now in a state of fear. Practically, even if you're just experimenting, all it takes is a fall asleep, a distraction, or alcohol in the mix, and suddenly hours have passed and you're in serious danger. So never, ever think not me. That false confidence has sent too many men to the ER. Mistake number three, waiting too long to seek help. This one might be the most common and the most dangerous. Men delay, they're embarrassed, they think maybe the swelling will go down on its own. But here's the biology. Swelling begets swelling. The longer circulation is blocked, the more trapped blood pools, the tighter the constriction becomes, and the more impossible removal is without tools. Emotionally, waiting magnifies the shame. 
You're sitting there in pain, afraid to tell anyone, letting the problem get worse. Practically, by the time you do go to the hospital, the situation may require saws, surgical instruments, or procedures that could have been avoided if you'd come earlier. So mistake number three, waiting. If this ever happens, don't waste time. Every hour matters. Mistake number two, mixing intoxication with risky behavior. Alcohol, recreational drugs, even some prescription medications, these lower inhibitions impair judgment and reduce pain signals. Biologically, that's a disaster. You don't feel the warning signs, like pain or pressure, until it's too late. And if you pass out with something constricting your penis, hours of damage can occur without you even realizing it. Emotionally, this creates a double shame. First, the risky act itself, and second, the realization you weren't in full control of your choices. Practically, if you're under the influence, you may not even be able to remove the object yourself or seek help quickly. So never mix intoxication with experimentation. It's like playing with fire while blindfolded. Mistake number one, ignoring safer, proven options. And here's the number one mistake. Ignoring the safe, medically approved options that actually exist. If your goal is to maintain firmer erections or enhance intimacy, you don't need to turn to dangerous objects. Medical-grade vacuum erection devices, for example, are specifically designed to create an erection safely. They come with release valves and elastic bands that can be removed. Biologically, these devices protect circulation and are designed not to strangle. Emotionally, they give you confidence instead of fear. Practically, they're widely available, affordable, and designed for exactly this purpose. So mistake number one? not knowing there are safer alternatives, and risking your health instead. All right, so what's the action plan if you ever find yourself in this situation or want to avoid it altogether? Prevention first. Don't experiment with objects not meant for sexual health. Stick to devices designed for men's health. If it happens, don't wait. Seek emergency help immediately. The sooner you go, the easier it is to fix. Don't let shame delay you. Doctors have seen this before. Our only concern is saving your health and function. Educate yourself and your partner. If intimacy is the goal, involve your partner in safer, healthier strategies. Remember the stakes. Delayed action can mean permanent damage, including loss of tissue. Acting fast can mean full recovery. Now, if you're listening to this and thinking, wow, I've done something like that before and I'm embarrassed, I want you to take a deep breath. You're not alone. Thousands of men have made these mistakes. It doesn't mean you're foolish or broken or beyond help. What matters is that you now know the truth and you have the tools to protect yourself moving forward. There is always hope. There is always a path forward. And your dignity, your confidence, your manhood, they matter. So here's what I want you to take away. Your health is too important to gamble with. Your body is resilient, but only if you give it the respect it deserves. Never risk permanent damage for a temporary thrill. Choose safety, choose knowledge, and choose self-respect. Because here's the truth, age is not the end of vitality. With the right choices, you can enjoy intimacy, freedom, and confidence at any stage of life. So don't let embarrassment keep you from seeking help. Don't let myths trick you into risky mistakes. And don't ever forget, your health is worth protecting. If this video opened your eyes, hit the like button, drop a comment letting me know where you're watching from, and subscribe so we can keep building a community of men who look out for themselves and each other. And remember, Take care of yourself because you're worth it. I'm Dr. Narita and I'll see you in the next one.